Hello, and welcome to the Professor Podcast with Ruth and Claire. Each episode, we talk about a particular topic in the life of a professor. We are tenure-track faculty members in the sciences, working at a primarily undergraduate university in California. The purpose of our podcast is reflection, so we bring something we think is working and something we're working on to discuss. Welcome to the Professor Podcast. I'm Bori. And I'm Claire. And today we're talking about being a good department member. But first, Bori, how was your week? My week was really good. It was very social. Oh, cool. Yeah. So it was homecoming week for HSU, and it uh-huh. was also homecoming week for the high school. Mm-hmm. So we ended up going to some events, um, including a football game, the high school football oh, game. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. And it was a lot of teenage energy. So um, I think I had forgotten how much fun that is. Uh-huh. You know? I think it was like because of uh, COVID yeah. being sort of over. Um just a lot of people were out, yeah. and yeah, it was it was fun. It was really fun. That is something I've been noticing, is how much energy you get from other people that I'd kind of forgotten about in all this isolation time. That's really cool to experience it in a football game. Yeah, I, I had similar thoughts, that I didn't feel necessarily miserable last year. I didn't feel like I was really uh, missing people the same way other people talked about, uh-huh. but now that... that kind of personal contact is back, I really am feeling very energized by that. Cool. Oh, that's awesome. How was your week, Claire? My week was good. I've been rereading some of my favorite old books from a long time. Um, My favorite author is Diana Wynne-Jones, and she writes kind of fantasy stuff. Hmm. Um, Common one that people have heard of is Howl's Moving Castle, because that got turned into a Wow. Anime movie. But anyway, she kind of just comes up with these fantastic worlds and then just plops you as the reader in and just kind of expects you to pick up the clues and figure out how this other world works. Wow. And um, I've been really enjoying that. So one of my, I, I read a few of hers recently, and I was reminded that my favorite one of hers is called The Lives of Christopher Chant. And it's about, it's one of these multiverses where there's a whole bunch of different worlds, uh-huh. and it's about traveling between them and... Um, people having multiple lives because there's like counterparts in different worlds. I just, I kind of enjoy that kind of thing. So it was a lot of fun to to go back. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know her at all. I don't know her work and it sounds like something I would really enjoy. Oh, cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. She's really not well known in the United States. I feel like, like in a lot of Hmm. most bookstores, she's not there, but, um, she Where wrote she tons from? of books. She's from the UK, I believe. Okay. And she wrote tons of children's books and adult books and all fantasy kind of things. And yeah. I'm super into it. Wow. I'll have to check it out. Cool. That's I a hope great you tip. do. Um, let's see. So I have a quote for us today. Awesome. Which is by Jen Sincero, because she's one of my favorite people with motivational quotes. And um, here we go. The more you make a habit out of looking for the awesome, forgiving the ugly and remembering that everyone is as lovable as they are flawed, including your sweet, stunning self, the happier you will be. And I just thought that was always a good thing to remember, but maybe in particular when we're thinking about being in a department and working with other people, trying to remember to not focus on little irritations, but to focus on the (laughs) lovable, overall, wonderful people they are. Yeah, I really like that one. Cool. So we're talking about being a good department member, and... I thought maybe we could start with just like, what do departments do together? Why, what, how do we all fit together as a department? And I'm interested in hearing how the math department compares to the chemistry department. And so would you just kind of tell us what does a department do together? Like what kinds of things do we work through together? Yeah, I think that's a great segue. And um, I think I said it in, my, in the last podcast that I recorded with you that I was department chair until recently. Mm-hmm. And it really kind of struck me how, you know, we have these very distinctive cultures. And even though it feels so natural when you're in a group of how, of how often you meet and how you socialize and how you recognize people, it is actually really quite distinctive. How interesting. Um, yeah, I thought so too. So um, I'm sorry, the question was... Well, like, well, I guess I'm just interested in... I, I thought maybe we could just tell our listeners what our departments do uh-huh. together. And, I, and then we'll see like how they contrast. So like, what right. does your department kind of do together? How often do you meet? What kinds of problems do you solve together? Yeah. So departments always work on curriculum together, uh-huh. right? That's, that's a common thread, I think, in all of them. 
And um, there's always some business that comes up and our department um, typically meets once every week, maybe every two weeks, okay. depending on how busy things are and how mm -hmm. many things are coming up. Mm -hmm. And um, we certainly talk about you know, current issues, anything that has to do with university policies that have some implication for our department. Mm -hmm. um, and then we also have a weekly colloquium okay. that we've run for a very long time. And it's invited speakers, you know, a mixture of people from the department and usually um, from the local community. During COVID, one of the silver linings was that we were able to have other people from Zoom outside cool. of the area. Cool. We have a special lecture each semester called the Kiva Lecture mm -hmm. that brings in people from outside the area. Mm -hmm. And then um, there are a couple of, I guess, like ceremonies that we have that tend to be towards the end of the year. So we do an award ceremony for our students. Oh, cool. We have quite a few scholarships. Mm -hmm. So we, um, when we award those, that's kind of a bigger, you know, bigger ceremony where We also recognize people, not just the scholarship winners, but people who did an excellent work, maybe mm -hmm. um, in our calculus sequence, or we have a couple of different contests. Mm -hmm. um, and then we typically do a potluck party um, for faculty, faculty and staff at the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. And then we do a potluck party for the students cool. before the end of the semester. So kind of the idea for that potluck party is that the faculty bring the food and the students get to just come mm -hmm. and um, decompress before finals. Cool. So I'm probably forgetting some things. There are a couple of contests that we've done for a number of years, um, some national ones like the Putnam exam or the okay. math contest in modeling. And then there are some local ones like yeah. the integration B, which uh -huh. is kind of like the spelling B for, okay. for integrals. Cool. So yeah, I guess we do quite a few things that are sort of straddling the social and yeah. academic That's so, so tell me about your department and well, what you guys do. Already, it's so interesting, the similarities and differences. So we meet much less frequently as a department. Oh, it depends on who the chair is, but sometimes it's just once or twice a semester. Sometimes it's once a month, but I, I haven't yet really experienced more frequent than uh -huh. that meetings. I mean, we do have like a seminar series where usually we get together, but it's just whoever can come and everyone's mm -hmm. schedules don't always work for that. So, um, so yeah, as a whole department meeting, it would be much less frequently than you, mm -hmm. it sounds like. But we do have, um, at the end of the academic year, we have a award ceremony as well, mm -hmm. and that's usually a big thing, and everybody who can come comes. And yeah, we have awards for students who did well in different areas of chemistry mm -hmm. or who got a scholarship, so it sounds very similar. Mm -hmm. And then we usually do have some kind of graduation party where the faculty bring food and the students can come and that kind of thing. So we have those two things right. kind of at the end of the year. Sounds very similar. Um, but yeah, actual number of meetings... We have much fewer, it sounds Interesting. like. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Are there ways in which the faculty um, get together, even if it's not an official department celebration, but maybe, you know, just potluck parties or people having lunch, anything like that? Good question. I mean, sometimes I think it definitely happens more so before COVID, but somebody would be like, I'm going to get a coffee. Do you want to get a coffee too? Uh -huh. And that kind of thing would happen kind of spontaneously. Or, I mean, definitely we have a lot of labs where... Somebody's teaching lab for three hours, but they don't, they're like kind of walking back and forth to the stock right. room. And maybe you interact with someone who has the lab next to you. And so we have a lot of informal interactions that kind of just happen yeah. naturally, but, um, but not as much, not as many formal things. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what would you say the role of the department is, um, what are the big things that you feel like you guys work on together? Yeah. Um, the first one that comes to mind is whenever we're hiring new Mm -hmm. faculty or staff, um, you know, there's usually a hiring committee that we make out of the, out of the faculty. Um, but then the whole department weighs in on it a little bit at least. And then, uh, yeah, curriculum things like, mm -hmm. do we want to count this class towards the major or should that just be mm -hmm. an optional elective and that kind of thing? Um, what else do we do? I mean, a lot of it resolves around space too, that we're all sharing the same space and mm -hmm. we all... Um, want to make sure that everyone has the resources they need for their classes and for their research. And so, you know, 
where should we put this stuff so that this person yeah. has space over here? That's kind of a big coordinating thing that uh-huh. we talk about as well. Yeah, yeah, I imagine that's a big deal for you guys because you have a lot of equipment mm-hmm. and supplies, mm-hmm. whereas that's less of an issue for us. That makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, let's see. So what, with all that context, now what's working for you with departmental culture and being a good department member? Yeah, so I did a lot of uh, thinking about this beforehand, and I think I'm kind of split on whether departments really are just this professional relationship between people or whether it should extend to something um, to something beyond that, mm-hmm, right? To mm-hmm. personal relationships. Okay. And I can kind of see pros and cons of each. And so I think when I talk about what's working well, I would answer that kind of differently depending on sure. um, which one we think the role of a department <laughs> okay, is. Okay, okay. Um, so I definitely think that in terms of... Um, professional relationships, you know, our department is very like collegial, Uh like people are friendly with each other Mm -hmm. and, um, and we definitely, um, I've, I've heard from others that sometimes there, there can be, uh, interpersonal tensions Mm -hmm. in other departments that can get quite ugly and uncomfortable Mm -hmm. and we don't have anything like that. That's great. So I feel like in terms of, um, in terms of being respectful with each other and, um, and sort of being able to, um, maintain a good, like good professional norms. Mm -hmm. I think we do quite well, Mm -hmm. which sounds like a low bar, but I actually don't (laughs) think, I don't think it necessarily is. It sounds very, very meaningful. And it seems like that is actually the foundation for lots of other stuff that you could maybe build on that. Like once you can get along together, you could do all kinds of things as a department, depending on what you decided to do as a department. Uh, Everybody can work on their own individual things, feeling connected with other people and like they can do that. I don't know. Is this, is this at all resonating with what you're feeling with your department? Yeah, I think, um, I think that's where maybe I would say we have room for improvement. I okay. think we're respectful, but not necessarily uh, not necessarily very cohesive okay. as a group. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think that's different from when I first came. And I think it you know it just happens when people have families and all of a sudden your life is busier. Mm-hmm. And to some extent, I'm not even sure how. Um, how um, normal of an expectation that is that you would have um, beyond these professional, you know, courteous relationships with each other. But that's definitely a place where I feel like we have the foundation, but Mm -hmm. it seems like we used to be more connected maybe than we are now. Interesting. Yeah. And that that additional connection you're kind of talking about, is that like more of a social connection beyond respectful Coworker, is that kind of what you're saying? That is, yeah, mm-hmm. that is exactly what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. So a sense of a sense of community, right? Like people, um, people being friends, sort mm-hmm. of outside of work. Mm-hmm. And I think, um, yeah, this is where I was really thinking about whether it's a reasonable reasonable expectation, yeah. right? Like, um, I think it's not necessary for a department to be a community too, but it seems like it's easier for students to plug into a program and to, um, to really feel like they identify Mm -hmm. with a major if there is already a community there to plug into. So that makes sense. I kind of see that as maybe not necessary, but it certainly is very helpful Mm -hmm. when that's there. Mm -hmm. Definitely joining the major and feeling like there's some cohesiveness to the department Seems yeah. like that would feel like you're joining a group rather than just taking some classes from so and so and then from so and so you're like part of this community. Yeah, I can see exactly, that. exactly. And it seems like that's pretty cool when students can join that community mm-hmm. and get to know us on mm-hmm. a different level. You yeah. know what it's making me think of is when I went to undergrad, the chemistry department where I was at, um, they were cohesive. I don't know how social they were outside Mm -hmm. of being in the same building together. But 
one thing that they did that was really cohesive was they all used PowerPoint extremely minimally. They all did a mm. lot of um, depth in topics rather than covering lots of breadth. Mm. So they had decided a lot of stuff as a department mm -hmm. that really made taking classes within that department feel continuous, even mm -hmm. though it was with different faculty members. And that was really nice. So um, it seems like maybe that's like a different scenario, but the same basic concept of having this community that's one major with you can join and have some group expectations or something like that. Yeah, I actually think that that's a great example, right? Because when a department functions well together mm -hmm. as a unit, then you, you do have this continuity in the curriculum. Yeah. And so students are able to understand how the different courses fit together into, a, into a cohesive program, uh -huh. um, which I think can, can um, get lost if people are not talking to each other, right? Like if you're not connecting about the curriculum mm -hmm. and... You know, people tend to teach the same courses and right. it becomes kind of, they, they become like these little isolated sure. islands within the curriculum. So I think it's, yeah, I do think it's an important example of mm -hmm. how being cohesive as a group can help um, students too. That's really interesting. Yeah. So what is working well in, in your department or for you being a good department member? Yeah. Well, it's kind of a similar thing. Um, I was thinking about being on friendly terms with everyone mm -hmm. And generally, my perception of our department is that um, there's a culture where faculty and staff are comfortable speaking up mm -hmm. if they need something. And I think that's great. And I think maybe part of that comes down to individuals getting along with individuals. And mm -hmm. then, you know, that all adds up to feeling comfortable speaking up at a department meeting or something like that. Um, yeah, so that's maybe a the, great yeah, one. The informal interactions kind of adding up to comfort in the in the community um and that's not to say that everybody's perfectly jolly with everyone but i think sure. most people get along with most people and that adds up to us getting along which is nice yeah and i definitely think that being able to speak up mm -hmm. and um and doing that in the group setting right when mm -hmm. everybody can hear it that's that's actually a really important part i think of having a functioning department i think um, so yeah because if people are holding back, then a lot of times um, problems don't get cleared up, right? Right, like, right. Yeah. You don't even yeah. know there is a problem or something, maybe. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, That's interesting. I like that. So yeah, very similar. So I wonder if we're working on similar things. What What are you working on? Yeah. Um, so again, I'm kind of answering this from this former department chair perspective. Okay, <laughs> yes, that's wonderful. But... A lot of times I felt that I wanted our department to um, become more cohesive about mm -hmm. our curriculum okay. and our and um, and reflect a little bit more about how to be inclusive to mm -hmm. students. Mm -hmm. And it just seemed like it was really difficult to um, get past the inertia, right? Like when something when you have a system that's working okay, then it's really difficult to try to improve. Yeah. And, um, and I think, yeah, I think that's the thing I feel like maybe I was working on as department chair mm -hmm. and I'd like to keep working on as, mm -hmm. you know, one of the regular faculty in the department now is pushing for the changes that I think would improve our program mm -hmm. and how to get that, how to get the buy-in from other people that those changes are important and necessary and, you know, that something makes, to rally behind. That makes a lot of sense. And so, yeah, it seems like there's lots of ways to go about the buy-in because, because as you say, it's going to be a lot more work to try to improve something. And especially if you're making connections across classes, which would be so valuable, mm -hmm. that requires so much more coordination. So what I mean, I can think of, you can kind of go about, oh, think about how awesome it will be, or oh, here's all the problems with our current scenario, like, I'm not sure which one, way would be best, but what, do you have any thoughts of what, how to get buy-in in this kind of scenario? Yeah, I mean, um, we were actually in my, last year, we were pretty much forced to reckon with um, having to make changes in right. our curriculum because of low enrollment, mm -hmm. and um, 
and it's, because of an MOU from our dean. What's and an I MOU? Think, oh, oh, sorry. It's a mem- memorandum of understanding. Okay. Yeah, which basically uh, outlines some targets for us to restructure our major oh, okay. and our curriculum. I see. Okay. Mm-hmm. And so we were pretty much forced to engage in a conversation, mm-hmm. and it was led by our curriculum committee, and they really did an outstanding job in. Um, essentially leading an almost year long conversation about what we would like, um, what we would like our curriculum to look like. And I think it was so helpful, right? Like that's something that we haven't done in a long time. Mm -hmm. Um, but I just hope that we can do the maintenance that's required now. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think right now we have kind of what you were describing from your undergrad, like we're kind of on the same page about what the, arc of our program should be like mm-hmm. where the different classes fit in and what we would like people to learn cool what we'd, we'd like our students to learn but I don't know if we have thought about how to maintain that okay yeah as because the the problem that you're foreseeing if I'm understanding correctly is that faculty members were going to keep teaching the same class and then maybe this cohesive understanding will kind of diverge as if we don't keep re yeah yeah Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. So okay. how do you how do you maintain um a culture where you keep connecting about what's working and mm-hmm. what isn't and what the courses are about? Yeah. That's such a great question. And it does seem like if you have just conversations fairly regularly, mm-hmm. it would probably happen fairly naturally, but how to make sure those conversations happen is an interesting question. Yeah, how to focus those, right? Like yes. how do you how do you have a conversation about the class that you're teaching and how it fits in? Mm-hmm. Like it seems like you would have to be really intentional about it. You, yeah. Um, yeah. I think so. That's yeah. really interesting. Well, that's awesome that you've managed to get cohesive as a department about how your major looks and that sounds really awesome. Yeah, I'm excited about it. I'm really excited about what this new curriculum will be. So it will start next year hopefully okay. if um we have you know the approval process going on mm-hmm. this year and um if that all goes well then the new curriculum is going to roll as of next fall and yeah. so did you reorder classes or reorganize what materials in what classes or what what kind of what are the main changes you made while well, restructuring this um so one of the things we were asked to do is uh, limit the number of options that we have. Okay. And so we had to rethink the content a little mm-hmm, bit mm-hmm. so that we would be able to serve the different audiences that we had. Um, but I think the most important like philosophical change that I think we all bought into, but it took a lot of conversations, is uh, thinking about how to make the curriculum a little bit more modern, okay. a little bit more like hands-on mm-hmm. and weave in computation mm-hmm. in a little bit more systematically through the entire curriculum. I see. So there will be a few specific courses that, um, a capstone course, which we have never done before, mm-hmm. um, that will be hands-on projects. But then to support that, we needed to think about like how to have... Um, at least one course before students get to the capstone where they would have a more scaffolded experience with Mm -hmm. doing projects. Oh, cool. And then we talked about different courses where computation would come in Mm -hmm. and a lot about what kind of computational tools to use, right? Because that's also kind of difficult. Like we're each, we were each doing different things in our classes. Oh, I love that. Now it seems like you all have a much better understanding of what is going on in the different classes and how they all connect together to scaffold to where you're trying to get to, which is making me realize that I don't really understand in the chemistry department, the different programs that different people are teaching the students in different classes. And maybe we could all coordinate on that a little bit better. That's really interesting. Yeah, I definitely feel like it was a really useful exercise. And I hope that we'll be able to keep talking about it because the implementation is going to be like really important, right? Yeah. And we'll probably have to do a couple of iterations before Mm -hmm. um, the curriculum for each class kind of settles down. That makes sense. But yeah, I think I am excited that we have this like more cohesive picture of kind of what the, yeah, what the experience of a student would be going through the program. That's really cool. Yeah. Well, so what kinds of things are you working on? So I'm working on, and I'm interested to hear your 
your thoughts on this. I'm working on helping the overall tone of the department mm. be more positive. So I, you know, yeah. focusing on the awesome things that we do and that we've been very intentional about choosing to do well, rather than talking about the things we feel that we uh -huh. wish we had. Um, and of course, I'm not saying we should forget the things we want because yeah. we should move towards them and all that. But I'm talking about setting the tone about how we think about our department and just remembering, like, for yeah. example, I think we do a really great job of having lots of lab hand -on, mm -hmm. hands on classes. And I think our students graduate really good in that area. Mm -hmm. And I think we all know that that's an area that we excel at, but we kind of forget to talk about that and sometimes emphasize more, oh, we wish we had this instrument or that kind of yeah. thing. And so I just want to, I'm just, so I guess what I'm, I'm just doing is trying to insert reminders yeah. of that so that hopefully us and also the students are feeling yeah. like proud to be part of this department that's doing these awesome things rather than disappointed about the particular things we're feeling we're lacking at the moment, you know? Yeah. Oh, that's really interesting. And I like how that connects with your quote too in uh -huh. the beginning, right? Of being able to highlight the positive things and recognize the good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. So where do you feel like the messaging comes up? Um, the negative messaging comes up? I think it's just, um, it's just kind of simmering in the background usually. Uh -huh. And so I'm kind of interested in your perspective as a chair too. Because it's it's more like, um, it's really easy, you know, you run into some problem and you wish you didn't yeah. have the problem, so it's easy to say, oh, darn, there's this problem here. And that makes perfect sense um, and is worth thinking about. Um, but I just want to make sure that we don't just stop there and say, oh, what mm -hmm. a bummer problem, you know? And especially to our students, I want them to be excited that they're doing all these awesome things that we've intentionally worked really yeah. hard to make for them. Um and not be bummed that we don't have the latest yeah. fancy thing or whatever it might be. Um, so I don't know. I'm just thinking about the tone. Like yeah. it should be, yeah, I think it's perfectly reasonable for everybody to know what things we would like to improve on, but it's also, I don't want to just focus on the negative because we also have all this yeah. positive that we should all be excited about at the same time, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I totally hear what you're saying. I think that's such a good point. And I think we tend to forget about that. Uh -huh. I wonder if um, it would tie together with recognizing not just student achievements, but recognizing um, faculty achievements or recognizing maybe not even just achievements, uh -huh. but um, effort, right? Yes. Like, or indicators that were a collective effort. Mm -hmm. That's um, a good point. Yeah. And I don't celebrating know. Celebrating more things. Exactly. Maybe. Yeah. Uh -huh. Celebrating. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I like that. And I'm not sure if that's, you know, something that you do in the department meeting where you set aside some of the time to talk about some of the things that have gone well, or if it's about, um, I don't know, getting yeah. together to celebrate things outside mm -hmm. department mm -hmm. meetings, right? Like, I don't know. I think yeah. it could be any of these and it could even be in the informal interactions, just spreading around. Yeah, oh, exactly. I heard you did this cool thing. That's awesome. I don't know. You know, just spreading around positivity. <laughs> yeah. Or even, um, I know that this was like a long time ago, but they had the faculty, the first year faculty from our college organize, uh, regular informal events. Oh, cool. And even something like that, right? If yes. you went out for beers once a mm -hmm. month or something mm -hmm. or once every couple of months, I don't yeah. know, like whatever is feasible. Whatever. Yeah. And just, yeah, made it lighthearted and fun. Uh -huh. like maybe that would be, yeah. I love how this helpful. connects to what you were talking about, about having more of a social side yeah. to the department. And that's really interesting. That is interesting. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't even thinking about that. But yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Cool. Well, thanks for this great discussion. I've definitely learned a lot. Thank you. Thanks Claire. so much for joining us on the Professor Podcast with Ruth and Claire. We're delighted to have you as a listener and we would love to hear from you. And if you want to email us, our address is contactprofessorpodcast at gmail.com. We'd love to hear any of your suggestions for future shows or professor quotes that you might want to share with us, or even just things that have come up for you when you were listening to previous episodes. And if you've been enjoying the podcast, we would love if you would spread the word. So the best way to spread word is by telling people you know, if you think they should listen to it, or you can leave us a review 
wherever you listen to your podcasts. Thanks so much for joining us and we'll see you next time.